Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode we're going to talk about how do we diagnose male pattern hair loss. Stick around. Welcome to the Hair Loss Show, where Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. So a lot of people experience hair loss and statistics would suggest that 50% of the male population will experience some degree of hair loss in their lifetimes. So how do we go about diagnosing it? What is the best way to diagnose? Well, first of all, please don't self-diagnose. I know it, you know, like I said, it's very common and the temptation is to do that. But if you are experiencing hair loss, please do make sure that you see someone who is, a, who is trained, who is medically trained, who is able to give you an opinion and therefore also be able to instigate and implement uh, treatment options for you. And so when we're specifically talking about male pattern hair loss, because hair loss is a obviously a very large, uh, sits under a very large umbrella and there are a variety of different causes of hair loss. But I specifically want to target androgenic alopecia or male pattern hair loss and talk about how do we diagnose this, all right? Because there are multiple different ways and some are more appropriate than others. And so each individual and how they present and the age at which they present, the type of hair loss, it will all determine the manner in which we choose to investigate that individual. So at one end of the extreme, prop the, probably the proper way, if you really wanna get a definitive diagnosis, is that of having a biopsy, where we take a small sample of skin and usually generally take multiple samples from different areas and we send that off to the lab, they cut the section, look at it under the microscope and they can see the histological changes that are associated in that skin and if those changes are consistent with male pattern hair loss, then that's when you get that definitive histological diagnosis that that is what's going on. And certainly we would do that in individuals where we're not 100% sure, uh, the, the presentation is slightly awkward, it doesn't sort of fit in with the, with the norms, but that will give you a definitive diagnosis. Do we do that all the time? No, thankfully, because it's quite invasive and you're making holes in the scalp. Yes, you stitch those up and it does leave you with a small scar, but ideally we don't want to do that. The next way of doing it at the other end of the spectrum is just by looking. And I think that's fine for a lot of people, but you actually want to be a little bit more elegant and specific about the way that you, you investigate this. And so a lot of what we do is using a dermatoscope, some form of magnification to see the, the hairs, see the scalps at high power, for, power magnification. And that we're looking to see what the scalp looks like and what the hairs look like. And generally hairs under the microscope, especially if you're, you're experiencing uh, androgenic alopecia, these hairs will undergo a, what we call a progressive miniaturized so seeing these hairs under magnification will give us that ability to pass that judgment. We're looking at the positioning of the hairs. Are they clumped together or are they spread out as normal? We'll also change how we view the diagnosis. And so it is important when you see someone that they have the tools to be able to give you that opinion to make sure that you've got the right diagnosis because that will determine the treatment options that are available to you. I hope you found that useful. Thanks again for watching. <clears throat> Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care. <music>